Hi guys, Kim here. Welcome to Backyard Blooms. Today I thought I'd bring you along to do some garden maintenance. It is late January, early February here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And behind me I have a limelight standard tree, which is just a tree form that is pretty much it has a bush on top of a tree. So I'm going to treat this the exact same way as I have my little limes that you see me prune. And I'm going to cut this tree off this top part, the, I'm gonna get all these spent blooms off, but I'm gonna cut this bush back by one third. So for roses, it doesn't really matter where you prune, but for hydrangeas, you do have like a little swelling, which is called a bud, and I'm gonna show you up close here. But I like to cut right above a bud because that's where your new growth is gonna come out at. So for this tree right here, to cut this back by one third, I'm gonna say this is probably a half right here and maybe one third ish right in here so i'm gonna cut off about that much right there so this is a spent bloom that i just cut off and these are the little buds that your new growth are, is going to come from and i cut right above this is where i cut like right above and it doesn't really matter if you cut at an angle here or straight across it really doesn't matter and I have my pop-up bag here that I use all the time. And I love this. It's really light. You can push it. I need to get me a new one. Mine's about spent. And just the same with any other tree. I'm going to get all these little, well, I just dropped that one these teeny tiny little spindly limbs I'm going to take off. This one's actually growing inside the tree. I don't want any limbs that are growing inside. I want all my branches to co come out like this. I feel like I'm pretty happy with this prune job right here. I hope that gives you kind of an idea. You don't want to take off too much because you want these limbs to be nice and sturdy and they have to be sturdy because they have such huge blooms that they'll like make this whole tree flop over. Actually we've had to, I don't know if you could see these, you can see this stake right here but this whole tree would like take the whole root ball and then lean all the way over so we had to stake the tree down here because all the heaviness even after it's been in the ground for just a couple of years. So like I said, I just took off one third of the tree, took off all my spent limbs. I took off anything that was spindly, such as this. And then I'll need to get all my limbs that I just like plopped onto the ground into the trash as well. I don't wanna leave any of that in the garden because that will create some disease. And I cut right up above a bud like I had just showed you and I got off any kind of crossing branches that went inside because I want to encourage everything to go outwards and of course if there's anything that's dying or damaged or that looks diseased but I don't see anything on this particular standard tree form right here so I think I'm pretty happy with that I see a few more little spindly little limbs in here Sometimes you like look it over and you still miss things. So I'm in my rose garden area right now and this particular rose is called Eustachia Ive. 
So I have a ton of new growth coming on to these roses, but I need to get some of this off as well. This one is really thorny, so I need to be really careful. But I don't have to be careful where I prune on these. Doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what kind of angle that I'm pruning at. I do want to make sure I get all these spent leaves and all everything that's on the ground on these roses. And I need to clear out the center really well because these had never been like really pruned well as far as shape. So they're quite a mess. So for right now, I'm just going to get all this foliage off right here to start with. So normally I would cut this rose back since it's not just a year old. A year old, you would do 12 to 18 inches from the ground, but two years on up, you just cut the rose back by half. But like I said, this rose doesn't seem like it needs a lot of pruning. It's not that big right now, but I'm gonna cut all the inner limbs that are growing inwards out. So I feel like for me, it's easier just to get half the rose pruned back and then I can go from there. Like I can like reassess after I get it cut back halfway. So I'm just gonna cut half to begin with. And of course this is dead. Right here you can tell that it's all brown. So that's dead. Again, this is like dead right here on top of this tip. Anything that crosses over onto another branch, take your pick and get which, whatever branch is best to remove. Any kind of prune job, remove by half if it's a rose. Hydrangeas, know what type of hydrangea you have before you start pruning on that because you don't want to prune on something that grows on on old old wood because then you're not gonna get any blooms this spring at all. I actually have a lot of dead branches on this one. And I'll show you this up close. This is brown compared to this green rose that I have right here. Now the rose that I have in front of me, the oh Gabrielle Oak, it has more of a deep reddish purplish limbs, but brown on any rose is not good. I'm just throwing all this in my pop-up bag. You don't want to leave any thorns at all on the ground because you're going to be sorry. For one, it creates disease. And another, when you reach down there and you get a thorn in your finger, is you're not going to be happy. I'm pruning off anything that goes inside the rose. Now this branch right here has green on here but brown on this, but I'm just going to go ahead and remove it, all of it. You can see that this branch is crossing over into this branch right here. Can you see that? Just get rid of that. This branch here is crossing over and it's growing inside. This one's inside, inside and brown. Now this one's getting really close to this boxwood, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove that as well. Like I want to make sure all my structures are still being cohesive with each other. I don't want it growing into this boxwood right here. This limb right here as well. So I might just go ahead and cut this all the way down. Just using my hand, but they do make a really nice little small rake that I need to invest in. That way I could get underneath these roses and just sweep some of these dead leaves away. I have already put like a really nice layer of land and sea compost onto this roses. So I'm glad that I did that. That'll give all these roses some nice nutrients for the next year for them to be able to flower. 
you know, they need food. And I actually am going to come in here and actually still give them a lot of rose tone. When it starts to warm up, I'm going to usually, I usually do that in March. And these roses actually give you so much that I actually feed them at least once a month. I know people say to leave the leaves in your, I guess I'll some of that dead too, to, um, leave leaves in your gardens that it actually is good for them but these these right here are not so in this case this is not a good instance to leave the leaves in the garden I got this all cleaned up and really nice for the birds. This just kind of like locks on to this thing right here, to the base. So you just fit it on there and kind of turn it. Of course, I need to glue my little bird back on. I glued it on once and didn't stay. And then we'll just fill this back up with water. And then I have another one over here. This base broke in, the, in that real cold spell that we had when it got down to like seven degrees. It burst, so I had to buy me a new one. I got that all filled up. Might as well use the rest on this. It's gonna rain a lot, so really not necessary for me to do this. And it has drainage hose, so it'll drain really well, but I already got some water in this bucket here anyway, so might as well use it. So I showed this Galloway urn in my video for my garden tour, and it just really needed to be pruned up. A lot of these violas had already had some damage from that frost, the really cold frost that we had. So I just trimmed that off, and these will just flush back really good. You can still see some damaged leaves on this hookra. Try to get most of it off. But the roots are alive. I cut down the uh, Dusty Miller way back, hoping it'll grow out, but if it doesn't, it's no big deal. But look at the intricate detail on this Galloway urn. So pretty. I do recommend that you buy at least one piece that you're going to just keep forever. Like I could pass this down to my girls and I think they would absolutely adore this piece. So the next thing on my list, I'm in the cottage garden right now and I'm towards the end of the cottage garden and I have common space here behind me. But in a prior video, I pruned up these roses for you. This is Celebration Rose, Olivia, light pink, light pink rose, Olivia here as well. And Celebration has more of a deeper pink and some yellows and some coral, just a really pretty rose and it smells divine, divine. Now this is another rose here and this is a climbing rose and this is called Shrodfire Lad. Not sure if I said that right. I'm sure it's a, like a European name. But anyways, so this is a climbing rose and I'm gonna treat this rose a little bit different. So from what I've learned, you want to keep the main canes coming off the base. Here, this is a really nice, sturdy main cane. And I want to cut the lateral canes off, so which is this is a lateral cane right here and here. And then up here, I'm just going to get the very tip top off just to get it like a really light prune. I believe, and you can comment below if you know more than I do, is that these climbing roses tend to grow more, like the, their blooms are more on old growth instead of new growth. They will shoot out new lateral limbs as well. So I'm not gonna take this down by a half. I'm not gonna take it down by a third. I'm just gonna like give it a real light prune up here and get the foliage off. I don't really have a lot of foliage from 
the prior fall on this rose at all. This is a trellis from Garden Supply. I love Garden Supply. Their stuff is just very tasteful, very unique. It's sturdy. This is like got three panels, one, two, three. And then I also have a clematis growing on this as well. And I love companion plants. And clematis is a really good companion plant for roses and they bloom the same time and it's gorgeous. So I can't wait to share that guys with you. I think last year I didn't start doing YouTube until June was my first video. So anything prior to that I did not get to share. So I'm super excited that I get to share my spring blooms. I get to share the first flush of all these roses because the first flush is the most gorgeous flush. So really excited about and that. And then I'm going to try to weave this rose, which is not very pliable. So I'm not even sure if I'm going to be able to weave it. But anyways, I'm definitely going to be able to uh, at least get it attached to this trellis right here. So I'm going to get my gloves on because I don't want to get pricked here. So this is a nice main cane, so I'm going to keep that. And then there's Dead. just a little bit on top here. Just get that off. Throw it in my pop-up bag. So let's keep this main cane. This is a main cane right here. I'm going to try not to get these to where they're crossing over. I have... It's going to be hard, though. Because I already have it. Let's see. I'm going to cut this one off here. Just going to get it down right down to that area because there's some dead right there. So I'm going to go ahead and unconnect. So this is what I bought prior and it works pretty good. If I can get it off to show it to you here. I bought this and this just is like a real soft pliable. It's got like wire inside of it and it's real soft so it's not going to hurt the growth. So I like this and I also have some more just regular wire that I'm going to use today as well. I'm going to go ahead and cut all these lateral edges off and then just get the very tip top just to say that I pruned it. I'm going to go ahead and take these lateral canes off and that one all these lateral ones will remove so this one has a real short cane here. Let's see. I'll probably actually mess this up the very first year that I pruned it because I pruned it wrong, which is my fault. So let's just take the very top of this off. Just a light prune. So my problem is, is that this cane's just not very pliable. So I'm just going to maybe pull it up here and then maybe I can get this to grow a little bit more lateral here. Or bring it here and then I can connect here and here as well. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and cut this clematis back a little bit. So 
last year I took a chance on this clematis and after it bloomed all the way out and was starting to die back, I cut it all the way back and it grew up gorgeous and gave me another flush at, in the fall. It was absolutely worth the, the risk. So now that I know that it'll do that, I'll do that every single year now. There's some kind of weed growing up right there. I have daylilies here at the base of this clematis. When I started first gardening, they said that when you plant clematis, you plant something at its base because the base like shade. So that's what I chose to do for this clematis. One right here might try to bring that back under this one if I can without hurting it. There we go. Now I can have a cane over here growing as well. Actually have a little piece here. Cut this off because I can use it again. I'm trying to want to train it kind of going this way, so I think I'm gonna put another little one right here. And that way I'll have flowers going this way too instead of just straight up. I can always weave it back around. All right, what's next? I have dahlia limbs over here. They'll probably actually just pull straight up out of the ground they do. Alright, so this is a nice great cane. Let me get the lateral ones off. This one's already attached over here. I just attached, this is a nice cane, I'm still going to keep that. These little ties that I'm using right now just kind of look like bread ties. I have some laying on the ground here. And this one right here, I have some old foliage on it, so I'm just going to snip that off. This is a really nice sturdy cane, so I can start this one growing a little bit more lateral. Let's see, I'm going to do this one. For climbing, I, I feel like and it's more work just trying to get it growing the right way that you want it to grow versus pruning. Let's see. I'm going to try to pull that back through here. I have bulbs coming up over here, so I'm trying to be careful. There's a little bit of dead right there. To use both hands sometimes. Let's see. I just have some wire here, kind of like a soft wire that I bought to help me with my Christmas tree, so I'm going to use this right now. Two lateral pieces right here that I'm going to get off. There we go. I've got some down here too. I 
This one's not, doesn't have a lot of thorns on it, so it's easy to work with. I'm not tying this too tight because you want it to be able to move back and forth with the wind and not damage it. I got that right there and I think I'm going to have these lateral, these lateral ones go like so. I've been kind of putting this chore off a little bit because it just takes so much time. Everybody might do this different, so it's okay if you do it different. All right. Now well, I have this, this one to tackle. Somehow. Get all these dead leaves out. So I'm going to cut off a couple long of these, so I'll just have let's see what this one's wanting to do. Just attach this here. Attach it here. I have a cane going up here, here, that way. And this one. needs a little bit more going this way I feel like but I have my clematis growing on this side I could have made this one go this way Let's see what it's doing it to there. Let's see if we can tie this one. It's easy to cut it for me. Let me see if I could get this to come down. All right. Just don't want to break it. Yeah, already did. Somewhere. I heard it snap somewhere. I don't see anything though. All right, I'm going to bring this one over here. I'll cut this little lateral piece off right here. This one can grow this way. Just 
needs to stay there. So let's just let it, let it stay here. Regretting here. Let's move this one. Bring it back out. I think I'm going to get it, try to go this way. longer piece Last thing that I'm going to do in the cottage garden right here today is I have a nepeta. This is there's I have three different types of nepeta in my garden. I have cat's pajamas over there. These right here are called cat meow. They are a proven winner's plant, and they don't grow as as aggressive as like a Walker's low, but a little bit larger than the cat's pajamas. So I feel like that they make a great companion plant for roses. They put out these gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. My husband says that I say gorgeous too much, by the way. But, oh well. They are gorgeous. And anyways, they put out these really light purple blooms when they do bloom out and I feel like that they give you a lot of interest all year round so after they flush out the very first time you can prune them all the way or give them a, not a good prune I'm not gonna say all the way back but at least halfway and they'll prune out they'll bloom out again for you so this one I did prune it back at some point but This is a great perennial, and I believe that Cat's Pajamas might be one of the proven winners perennial of the year. I think I saw that on an email. A lot of nurseries are starting to carry this one because it is such a popular plant. Of course, I usually get all my proven winners plants from Jenny at Creekside. I'm so lucky that she is close to me. And I learned about this plant from Laura and her channel name is Gardening Garden Answer. And you guys, I was so excited. She put my garden on her channel this past Friday. So I'll put that link to where she talked about my garden. It's towards the end of that video, but she has had several videos of garden inspiration. 
and she put my video on her third one. So it's the third garden inspiration. I was so happy. So I am just kind of rounding this plant off a little bit. You could do this with shears if you want to, if you don't want to use pruners. I'll just use these pruners for everything. They're a great investment. They're a little bit pricey, around the $60 to $70 range, depending on where you get them. And I'll put the link also into the description, but I use them every single day. Like honestly, every day, and they spring back really well. See, they got a great little spring here. Now, Nepeta does not like a lot of fertilizer. So this is one that I might just give a little bit, but I don't overdo with fertilizer. All right. So all these other ones are, have been pruned back. I just had this one. By the way, it's really, by the way, it's really easy to prune these when your roses are pruned because you're, you don't have all those long canes like poking you everywhere. you win. 